is like the third time I've tried recording this stupid video, so I'm kind of over being all quirky and oh wow, it's been a while since I made a video. Let's just get into it. Once upon a time now, I asked you guys, gals, and non-binary pals for your Degrassi hot takes, so then I now can give my very biased reactions to them. I feel the need to disclaimer though. If I disagree with you on your take or don't feel that it's a hot take, that's not a value judgment on you. And if you don't see your hot take here, it may be in the second part of this video, or YouTube may have removed it before I saw it. They've been doing that a lot within the past year and it's driving me up the wall. I do also want to note that I did have to summarize most of these for the sake of time and brevity. And now, finally, on to the hot takes. Shantae deserved better. I don't know if it's a hot take since most people agree that she got the short end of the stick during her run on the show, but maybe it is given how people respond to her not getting much to do with hatred towards the character. I hope it's not controversial to say that, yeah, Shantae deserved better. I liked her when she got to be more than just background noise. It was fun having her be the gossipy gal Degrassi, and it was a good fit for her to be head cheerleader in season 10. Unlike with some of the other ignored characters, I think Shantae and her actress had untapped potential. I can't speak for why Shantae did so little during her run on the show, but I can't help but wonder what if she got to be like Anya or Holly J and spread her wings as the OG TNG cast left. The season's 9 and 10 TNG intros are my faves, and the Stu's rendition of the TNG theme song is the best one. Um, sort of agree? I guess I'm inclined to lean that way since it's what I think of when I remember that era of theme songs. That voice, that tone, it's the one that stuck with me most. But I still like other themes from that era of TNG. Basically from seasons 8 through 12 are my favorites for the TNG theme songs. I'm kind of curious if this is considered a hot take. I know most people seem to hate the theme songs after season 12, but let me know in the comments what theme song you like the best. To be honest, my theme song hot take is that the next class theme is not that bad, guys. It's very of the era that it came out in. Now whether or not it aligns with my personal taste, that's a different story. Jimmy and Manny would have been an interesting couple. I think they could have been too. They never really interacted one-on-one, -on -one, so I'm curious what they might have been like together. Hell, I even wrote a short crack ship giving away that they could have gone together, and I gotta say, it was one of my favorite ones to write. Certainly a fun pairing to imagine, and not the most outlandish. Maybe Manny should have dated Jimmy instead of getting with Craig again. Claire and Drew weren't that bad. They're less toxic than her with Eli. That's a spicy take in my house, and I partially agree. While I will say that E. Claire got better as they went on, Drew and Claire did have some undeniable chemistry. They seemed good with each other, good for each other, and was a bit of a wasted opportunity in my opinion. I don't mind them as a couple at all. The only thing I do mind is breaking both Claire and Drew to make them do the risky tango first thing, then immediately separate. The pregnancy storyline we got after was good, but I'm still sore about how Drew and Claire were done dirty. Sean and Ellie should have been Endgame and they're better than Emma and Sean. Wow, I got a few of this one, and I'm not sure if it's a hot take, at least for me, because I'm firmly in the silly camp. Now, I understand why they weren't Endgame, but dang, they worked so well together, I wish we would have gotten to see them as a couple after season 4. I know Sema is the big, early TNG romance, but they can't hold a candle to Sully for me. Eli and Claire are toxic. I can see how that's a hot take in certain camps. I feel like these days the Eclair adoration has drastically fallen off from where it was when TNG was still airing, but I'm sure they still have their defenders. Including me! But I do recognize that they often weren't good for each other. Again, while I feel that they got better over time, a lot of the interesting stories came from their dysfunction. And especially in season 10, how toxic they were together was kind of the point. Exploring a mentally and emotionally abusive relationship and how those aspects that seem charming at first look very different when you're outside the heat of infatuation. Unfortunately, it's true that some viewers miss that and romanticize their toxicity. I know I did when I first watched season 10. But I don't think it's good to swing to the other extreme and just completely write them off for being problematic. There's a lot to be learned and understood by watching these two continually collide because not all relationships are healthy. Sometimes you are certain you found your soulmate in someone who just isn't good for you. And seeing someone experience those red flags can help you to learn to notice them yourself. As I've said in other videos, I will argue that they got better over time, but they still had a lot of growing to do even after they both left the show. 
Claire was only relevant for Eli. <sighs> that's a hot take and that's gonna be a hard no from me. That ignores so much about her character. There's so much more to her outside of Eli. Yes, part of her story is how much she gets swept up by Eli and her other love interests and thus loses sight of her goals, but there's so much more outside of them. Recall her struggle to grow outside her comfort zone when she wore her school uniform every day, her difficulty accepting and understanding her parents' divorce, and her subsequent crisis of faith and morality because of it, how every time she was confronted with authoritarianism from the school, she was a vocal opponent of it, and more! Claire has so much more life outside of Eli, don't do Claire Bear dirty! There's a major difference between a good character but bad person, bad character but good person, and bad person plus bad character. This should not be a hot take. But one of the most frustrating things about the Degrassi fandom for me is that this needs to be said over and over. A character's imperfections don't make them a bad character or a victim of bad writing. Realistic characters need to act like realistic people, i.e. they need to be flawed. No one is so perfect that the only bad in their life comes from outside sources. We all make mistakes, big and small. We all have our flaws and quirks. If we didn't, we'd live in an after-school special universe. I just saw this recently on the Degrassi subreddit where someone claimed that Baz is a bad character. But he really isn't. He has internal logic. You understand why he does the things that he does, and he doesn't just suddenly switch the kind of person he is. The problem with him is that he's underutilized. Baz can be a shitty person, but that doesn't mean he's poorly written or a bad character. Hell, he's a great character because it makes sense that he thinks the shitty things that he does. Holly J was a horrible person when she was introduced, but she's a good character not because she became a better person. She's a good character because she's multifaceted. She can grow and learn, and it's interesting to watch her. Maya isn't a bad character because she doesn't make the right choices all the time. In fact, she's a great character because we can understand why she does cringy things like break into Miles' house or feel the need to save everyone. Luke is a horrible person and I hate him so much, but he's a good character because he displays the realistic dehumanizing of those around him to justify how he hurts them. Mia is overhated. I agree. Sometimes I wonder if people hate her because she's the third in the JT Liberty Mia love triangle. I know people are bothered by her glamorous modeling career, but I also like that turn for her character because it had her conflict with being a mom and a good role model for her daughter and doing what was fun in the moment. Having to figure out for herself where the balance is between her career and dreams and the family life that she doesn't want to walk out on. I think there's a lot to her character that gets overlooked because of the fact that she became a model and that she prevented JT and Liberty from being together simply by existing. Eli should have been allowed to give girls other than Claire a chance. I'm not sure where I stand on this. On the one hand, it might have been cool to see him with someone else. Especially when they broke up in season 13, it might have been best to let them stay apart and explore other people. As shitty as an ending to be clear that would have been. But I disagree that he only ever gave Claire a chance. He did try being with Imogen and Ernest in season 11b, but he ended up ruining that relationship. Not because of pining after Claire again, but because of his insecurities. Actually, both Imogen and Eli kind of ruined that relationship. Eli was afraid of being treated differently because of being bipolar, and it didn't help that the people around him were doing just that. His dad was suddenly being more of a parent than he was previously, Perino was excusing Eli for forgetting his assignment, and Imogen was acting more like a therapist than a girlfriend on top of making him the literal poster child for bipolar disorder. They broke up for the same reason that Claire and Eli broke up in season 12. Imogen was seeing Eli as a person with bipolar disorder instead of as her boyfriend who also happens to have it, where accidentally knocking her camera off the desk gets interpreted as freaking out on her which then unfortunately did lead to him obsessing over her keeping secrets and lying to him and ultimately pushing her away. I'd say they did give it a fair shade, but they didn't work out for understandable reasons. Maybe he expands his dating pool after Claire graduated, but I can't fault the writers for pairing them together often. They were each other's epic high school romance, and damn, their actors have amazing chemistry. Rick tried to be better. I'm not sure if this is a hot take really, but he did try. But Degrassi wasn't the place for him to try to be better. 
He didn't really take into account that people wouldn't just forgive and forget what he did. People love to say that Raditz shouldn't have let Rick come back, but don't forget that going back to Degrassi was Rick's decision too. He specifically wanted to go back to Degrassi and act like nothing happened with him and Terry. If he tried to do his anger management improvement at another school, maybe things would have ended differently. That's roughly the halfway point in the script, so I think I'm gonna cut it off here and make a part two. Gotta do what I can to maximize those views. <laughs> In the meantime, if you want to follow my progress on part two, you can check me out on Twitter at NotVampire. You can follow this Discord invite link to a Discord server that me and my friends made and chat with me and my Not a Vampire Crypt. And if you want to support me making more videos, then check me out on Patreon as well. Thank you for consuming this video, and until next time.